I'm gonna tell you about the coming of the judgment. I'm gonna tell you about the coming of the judgment. There's a better day a coming. Mr. McGowan, where were you born? Oh, that's a long time ago. I was born in Atlanta and Georgia and went to school there and went through the public school system, high school system. Tell me about the schools, your elementary schools that you went to. That was in the period of segregation. Was that, were you in school in probably about the 20s? I was in, in school in the 20s, yes, and uh, it was totally segregated. As a matter of fact, I didn't see anybody but black people. But yes, I went to totally segregated schools. You went to Morehouse College, and what did you major in? I majored in French and in English. French, English, and theater. It was a mixed kind of major. True forever, true forever, to Morehouse may we be. And when you finished Morehouse, what did you do? After Morehouse, I started teaching. I taught at the high school there, and I taught there for a, about five years. After that, it was time to go into the service, right? Uh, so I went into the Navy. After the Navy, I went back to Atlanta for a while and uh, went from there to New York. I started graduate work. I was going for a master's at Teachers College in guidance. Mm. But after that, I decided that I'd better go for something else. And I went to New York University in uh, psychology. Is that when you worked on your PhD at, at New York University? That's when I started, and that's where I finished it. I did the master's there and later the PhD. And then I got an offer, my wife and I together, to come to Southern University. Mrs. McGowan was teaching music and directing the choir, and I was teaching psychology there. What were you interested in in psychology? What area of psychology were you interested in doing? I was very interested in children, child psychology, educational psychology, and things of that kind. Then you got an offer to come to Delaware. How did that offer come? That's, that's, that's interesting. Uh, they called me from the placement office sometime, and there were, a letter had been received from Wilmington, and uh, they were trying to find two psychologists, I think. And there was a little quote, uh, and one of them can be black. So, <laughs> one can be black. One can be, so I had some, I, some indication of the kind of place it would be and the kind of experiences I would anticipate. Got here in 1951. I had looked forward with considerable anticipation to coming to Delaware because it was just outside of Philadelphia and I didn't want to go back that, back south actually. Uh, so I was happy about the invitation to come. But when I got here, I suddenly found that the place was segregated, you know, that segregation was legal here. I had not anticipated that segregation would be legal just a few miles south of Philadelphia, but once the decision had been made, it was too late to change, so I came. There was no place to live. I couldn't check into a hotel. A principal, Mr. Waters, took charge of me, and he had located a place for me, which was at the Walnut Street YMCA. So uh, thanks to him, I got this place at uh, the Walnut Street Y, which had dormitories at the time, very nice ones. Now, where exactly were you working? I was working across town from the Y, across Market Street, in the administration building. 
That too was interesting because I understand that I was the first non-white person, you know, with offices in the administration building. So uh, that had to be adjusted to, uh, but that turned out to be not bad at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, what about your work? Were you servicing only African-American children? <laughs> they didn't tell me that, but it soon became evident when uh, they took me around to the schools that I would be servicing, that all of them were black. There were no whites anywhere. And I was doing only the public schools. There were some parochial school students nearby and I did some work with them. But generally the schools were all black. What schools were you working with? Do you remember the schools that, that you were assigned to? I was assigned to about five or six schools at the time. Mm -hmm. One of them was a, a school called Douglas uh -huh. on the west side of town, a school called Number 29 oh, yes. on the east side of town, and uh, a school called Elbert on the south part of town. Those were the only buildings that I had. There were, however, church places. I, classes were being held in churches the physical plant for the black children at that time was quite bad, quite poor. And what were some of the kinds of issues you were dealing with as a psychologist? The standard procedure, of course, in, at that time, and probably still the case, I'm quite sure it's still the case, uh, was that everybody would uh, be given a, a, a set of tests which were approved, uh, and the score that you got on the test often determined where you would be placed, for example. That can be and has been tragic because on any given day, somebody can score poorly but be quite right, you know. This happened often with, uh, with black children who often conceal uh, or don't want to give you a, a particular answer and just show up poorly if you go simply by the test and by the regulations of the test. What would be needed was an understanding of more than just the test, but an understanding of background situations, what the parents think. You need much more than the test. You need interviews with the parents, interviews with other people who've observed the kid. You need a great deal of data before you can decide uh, on the status of any given child, right? When I came here, for example, most of the classes called special education were overpopulated with black uh, students, which was quite interesting because some of the people I found who were labeled mentally retarded were quite, quite bright, quite far from be being mentally retarded. There was trauma, there were feelings of inferiority, which would sometimes lead to feelings of aggression, a lot of anxiety. You had some weird experiences. For example, uh, one case would be a, a young man, he was, he was just out of school, but he had come out through mental retarded classes, and he was uh, operating three barber shops, you see, uh, and, and had hired several so-called average people to run them. It was an absurd situation, but that could be multiplied many times. Mm -hmm. I think things got a little better, but they are still, even to this day, uh, a bad situation for black children. What other